What is up guys? Welcome back to episode 2 of our Digimon World Next Order Let's Play. That's something I never thought I'd be saying for quite some time, but we are back. And here we are, we're just about to go out of the city for the first time in the Let's Play, and I'm super excited. So, if kicking Digimon ass and taking names is something that you might or might not be interested in, then sit tight, because episode 2 starts right now. Alright, so when we left off in the last episode, we had just Digivolved into our two rookies. We have Finn as Black Agamon and we have Alex as Aroramon. Aroramon actually looks identical to Palmon in almost every way, but her her colour scheme is different. Alright, she, she's not completely pink, she's got this kind of nice purple theme going on. But anyways, one thing that we have to do at the start of this day is go in here re very, very quickly and speak to Koromon. And we're going to get a bunch of items from our item bro here. But a couple of items that are going to help us sustain and survive a bit better when we are out in the world. Koromon's quite important and we're going to be visiting that little dude quite a lot. And here we go. We can walk over to this edge of town and click X and it will actually let us out into Nye Plains and the Vast Plateau. We will have a couple more um, We will have a couple more tutorials to go through in just a minute, but for the most part, it's fine. All of the kind of slow jarring stuff that we went through in the last episode, that's all kind of done for. At this point, we really are allowed to kind of go out and do what we want. We just have to go through a couple of things left like this and that will be us on our way. So not to keep debating you guys, but uh, yeah. Here is our first kind of mini boss slash mini encounter called Patamon. I'm sure you guys will recognize Patamon. Let me jump back up onto this part, this bit here, so I'm not covering the dialogue. <laughs> I mentioned it very briefly in the last episode, but um, webcam positioning in this game can be pretty tricky, all right? There is not a lot um, of screen space that Next Order doesn't use, but here we go. Patamon is going to be an absolute pushover, despite, the, despite all the nonsense I was talking about in the last episode about how difficult the game can be. What I'm going to do here is make sure that, uh, oh god, I've just realised something, but Aroramon here, yeah, that's that's Patamon dead. Aroramon's main ability right now is actually, is actually Mac Jab, which is pretty bad, alright? it's It's got its spot in the game, but, you know, anyways, we get very little money, we get very little XP and very little stats from beating Patamon, to be expected. We did a lot of training yesterday, so, unfortunately for Patamon, he gets an absolute butt smashing. Holy shit, this game is actually making me sweat with this webcam shit. I held back, but are you okay? Let's just talk to this guy. I think we all know what's coming. But basically, Patamon is uh, is going to find out just about the city, which, you know, is literally just through the bit of rock crevice that we came through, the little valley. I don't know how he doesn't know there's a city there, but anyways, off he runs. It doesn't it doesn't look like he is running towards the city, but apparently, apparently is. Patamon joined the city, and we get the same old... Um, sound effect slash sound cue that we got from World Digimon World 1. Again, remastered. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a nice feeling. We'll hear that quite a lot. And normally when we hear that, it's a good thing because we've overcome a new obstacle. But anyway, the game's going to tell us very briefly about City Prosperity and Digimail. Digimail, we don't really give a fuck about because honestly, it's only put on this game to tell all the players involved. Basically, what will happen is your, your Digimail basically is like a... It's a way for you to keep on top of your objectives, okay? When you get a new Digimon to join this town, blah, 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 they'll send you a message. If you have a quest for a Digimon, it will appear in the Digimail, blah, de, blah, de, blah. And honestly, it just kind of annoys me a little bit, but it can have its spot and we will use it at some point later on. So as Aurora one is uh, extremely happy and running about, he's going to make a bunch of noise. But Digi uh, Say Prosperity is actually just the points... Um, that keep track of how, how quickly your city is growing, okay? So it starts at 1, it goes all the way up to 100, I believe, if it's the same as Digimon World 1. It's like a percentage kind of bar. When you get rookies to join the city, you will get 1 point. When you get champions, you get 2 points. Ultimates, 3 points, blah de blah de blah And it's just a way to help you kind of keep track of your progress. And I guess if you're playing this game at the same time as other people or your friends or whatever, you can compare prosperity points and see how far each of you is through the game. It's kind of just a metric in that sense but anyways we get our first introduction to materials and also resources in the game now 
like resources such as like food, mushrooms, plants, anything that you can harvest from the world that will randomly spawn. That all happened in Digimon World 1, that's pretty straightforward. The new feature here is actually our materials, alright, this, this jazz here, where we can collect materials from the world, it's this yellow glowing thing, in this case we get Digicopper. The materials only have one function in this game, and I was wanting to talk to you about it, but apparently there's a fucking goblin on here just chilling in the path, ready to kick her ass, but... Anyways, yeah, materials will be used later on to be... It'll help us expand the city a little bit and also build uh, buildings within the city. In order for us to do upgrades of our buildings that we currently have and improve them, we will need materials. In order to collect materials, we'll just grab them when we're running about the city it's, or, or the world. It's just kind of how this game works, but... This is the game just telling us all about that jazz, anyway. And we get a nice kind of panoramic shot of the, the new area that we're in. I don't know why the mobility on the on the scan across the world here is... It, it just looks a bit off, you know, it kind of... There's about as much enthusiasm as my gran after she sobbed a couple of tequilas, do you know what I mean? I, mean, I, I don't know what's going on here, but... The game is basically just telling us here that we can, uh, we can explore all the different parts of the world now. I think there's five exits from this starting area, if you include the city. And yeah, you can just kind of go wherever the fuck you want. Now, that's not entirely true because if you go into some of these exits, immediately you're going to get the butt whooping of your lifetime. Uh, of your or of your life, rather. But first, we're going to take a couple of easy battles. This is the very, very last thing, I'm pretty sure. The last tutorial we get before we are allowed to just fucking do whatever we want. I'm starting to get a bit annoyed now because I, <laughs> I forgot there was this many things. I'm like, game, I keep telling my friends here that we can play the game and do what we want and then another fucking tutorial appears, but... This is pretty much the last one, I am pretty sure. So here we go. Basically, the game is telling us that we can use items in battle. We never had to do that with War Garurumon and Metal Garurumon. War Greymon and Metal Garurumon at the beginning of the game. But now we can. And we can also use the square button to kind of uh, pick our targets as well. Which is something that we might need to do later. So against this guy, we will not have to put in too much effort. But hopefully we can beat his ass without losing too much HP. I'm going to queue up a Mac Jag here and try and get it off, and then when Black Agamon lands his, I'm going to queue up another attack, which we don't need anyway, because this guy's dead. So, with all this nonsense being said, we can actually play the game a little bit now. That is us, we are absolutely done. Yeah, okay, yeah, we're fine. So our order points again, it's the, the points we get in battle and let us do commands, but let's actually go and do some fun stuff, because from now on, see this little Goblimon here? He is level 2 and he's going to be a little bit stronger than these guys. In fact, let's actually see how we square up against this guy. <laughs> it's been a while since I've played this game. But uh, there are going to be enemies that are um, very difficult. Now, in the beginning, we actually have 6 recovery items. So I'm pretty sure that we will be able to uh, keep an eye on our Digimon and not lose too much HP. But if we can get through these battles without too much difficulty, that would be fantastic. What I am probably going to do in the first couple of battles is probably just use our individual abilities to scale through as quickly as possible because it, what I would normally do is wait for our Digimon to uh, I'll wait for our Digimon to attack and then do a automatic reset using their ability buttons so here Auroramon's going in for our attack once she does that I'm going to queue up another one and it'll just let her hit twice and I think Black Agamon should be using his ability yet is that going to reach? yes okay nice so again, we're just trying to keep these battles go smoothly. You don't have to do this as I'm doing, and later on, when we are fighting against harder opponents, I definitely will not be doing things that way. I will be, you know, picking and choosing my order commands a bit better, and also trying to save up for our ultimate abilities, because that that is going to be pretty important. Sorry, I got a fright there. Because the games went quiet, I thought it wasn't capturing game audio, but... Anyways. So here we go. Now that we've beat that our first little Goblimon, we get a bit more XP, because he was level 2. All the other enemies that we've fought so far have been level 1. And we have our first interest in Digimon. I want to talk to this guy pretty soon because he's quite important. We have Tentamon here. I haven't seen you guys around. Um, wait a minute, are you one of these humans? Howdy. So Tentamon has a very, very important role within the game, or at least in the early game. And so I'm glad we found him early. Oh, I just clicked the wrong button and I apologise. So we're going to talk to him again. But Tentamon is going to offer to sell us something. And I said no there when I've not meant to say no. But for some reason, I mean, the dialogue in this game is kind of interesting. Normally, whatever you choose doesn't really matter. It's normally just a yes or no situation. And against some of the harder Digimon later on that you encounter, it's a way for you to say, you know, oh shit, we've banged into you and you're big and scary and we're not strong enough to beat you yet. But for the time being, we're going to say yes to Tentamon. We're going to buy what it is he offered us. Uh, in this case, it is a, a small recovery. I think it's always a small recovery. But now, Tentamon is went to join the city. 
and the reason he sold as a recovery is because when he joins the city, he intends to uh, he intends to open up a shop there. So yeah, we've got our first natural city resident. There is I don't think there's that many in the starting area. I think there's two more. So we're gonna go across and grab those as early as we can because these guys are gonna make up kind of our starting area and our starting recruits. So they're quite important. Here we've got Palmon. Let's chat to this guy and see if he's as easy to recruit. You guys have come at a good time and I need your help with something. I'm looking for fertilizer to help me make some tasty meat. So this right here is a clue as to what Patmon will do. Or Palmon, sorry, did I call him Patmon the first time? I don't know. But uh, we're going to say no problem. Yeah, she wants to make fertilizer in order to grow meat. So, yeah, as, as weird as that sounds, because um, I don't think that's normally what you would do. But anyways, uh, you bet. Palmon needs a bunch of materials. Now, we actually have some of them, but there is one important one that she requested that we don't have yet. So, we're just going to wander about and try and find that in order to recruit her. And if we could get her done this episode, that would be fantastic. Is this actually what we need? A quick fruit. All right, okay. So, I'm pretty sure if we use our Digimon, our Digimail here, we can actually make it, put it to good use here. So, Palmon needs a digi stock a cheerful apple and a salty fruit now i thought that item that we were about to pick up was the salty fruit that we needed that would have been far too convenient but now we know what we're looking for we already have digi mushrooms and we also already have a cheerful apple we picked that up a second ago actually so we're already on the way to recruiting palmon we just need to find that one other salty fruit so here we have biomon and apparently biomon's trying something here i go oh wait i can't do it so uh, what's what's happening here is Beomon's trying to learn to fly and she can't do it yet. Now, I think it told us in the dialogue that she was like she she made a jump in effort and it didn't work. I think that they should have made her like jump off the cliff and face plant into the river, but apparently they just didn't go for that. They went for the PG option, which uh, you know is fine. But anyways, hopefully if they make next order two and Beomon makes a return, game devs, you listen up here, you know what to do. But. What happens for Beomon here is that, for the time being, it looks like Beomon can't join the city just yet until she learns to fly. It's kind of cheesy, I know, but that's just the way it is. Our two guys need the bathroom, so we're going to head in that direction just now. And we've got some red materials here, which we could, I guess we could pick up on the way. Our materials aren't going to be used to us at all in the early game, but, you know, it's something that as we go, if we collect it now, we can save ourselves a bit of a, a, bit of a grind later on, but... Yeah, Beomon will, will come and join the city, but first we need to find a Digimon who can fly. And then, I guess you speak to Beomon after you do that, and then she joins the city. And Beomon's got quite a quite a good role in the city, if you ask me, because she gives us an item that is very important. Uh, and one that I want to get ASAP, because it's one of my favourite items in the game. So, when you go to the bathroom, your Digimon get a happiness bonus, because it's like a trainer requirement, I guess. So, if you accomplish that, you get a happiness boost, which is very good for us here. Now, there are a couple of areas that we can go in and explore right now, but I don't know if our Digimon are strong enough. And if we did go in and fight some of the dudes, then we would probably end up burning a lot of our resources, which we don't really want to do right now. So, this this episode here is probably going to be pretty chillaxed. We're just going to be wandering around the city a little bit. Uh, I'm going to use our recovery disc on Palmon here. Or Aurorumon, I should say. Holy shit, that's going to tilt me. That, that's going to happen a couple of times, guys. My patas and my pals and my Aurorumons are going to get muddled up. If you've never watched a Let's Play from me before, then uh, you'll quickly gather that that is something that we do. I'm going to show you guys right now if that's... Is that going to reach? No, it's not. Okay. So, what I can do is try and get try and get this timing a bit down a bit better in this battle. So, with the support button, I've been mashing it so far, but if you wait... Until your Digimon connect, you get this bo this bonus here. So, you know, Aurorumon got plus 30 points here. What I'm going to do is try and end this battle as fast as I can. Because this uh, Gaburimon or Goblimon is doing a decent amount of damage to us. And I, I don't want to take more damage than I have to. But we pick up a bit of stats, a bit of XP, and we also pick up an MP disc, which is kind of important. These early game battles are going to be pretty shitty for giving us uh, buffs. But for times like this, in which you get op an opportunity to uh, praise your Digimon... It's definitely worthwhile because what happens is every now and then when you accomplish something like, you know, you uh, you train in the gym or you win a battle, your Digimon will come up to you and ask you for feedback. That is what's happening right now. So uh, basically, if you choose, you can choose to praise or scold your Digimon. If you praise them, you get a bunch of uh, boosts to your Digibond, your discipline and your happiness. And if you scold them, you will, get a, you will lower their discipline. And that's a bit of a, a complex technique that we'll, we'll be looking at later on in the game. But for now, we always kind of just want to praise our Digimon because it's going to boost all of our, our things. And we also unlock these, which are 
info conditions that we are going to need later on in order to digivolve into specific Digimon. So for, for the first couple of points in this game, the first little while, all of our Digimo Digivolutions are probably going to be random, which I quite like. Kind of adds a bit of a, a bit of excitement onto the Let's Play because we don't actually know who we're going to turn into. Um, but later on, that's not going to fly. We're going to be wanting specific strong Digimon. We're going to aim for specific Digimon. And until we get to that stage, we're just kind of... We're going to be picking up all these bits of information that will help us along the way. So I think what we will do is we will not enter that spot right now because all the Digimon in there are extremely scary. I'm going to try and run past this Goblimon, but Lord knows if he's going to encounter us or not. In general, in this game, you can outrun a lot of the encounters if you are uh, clever enough or if you are kind of on the ball. But what can actually happen is the collision with your Digimon and the random Digimon can bounce off each other a couple of, time, a couple of times, and that can kind of fuck you up a little bit. So the reason I came into this area is because uh, there was a spawn here that I wanted to pick up. It's not what we need, unfortunately, but we'll keep looking. And for the time being, that's fine. We could also harvest that wood plant material thing there. But if I stopped and harvested every material that we run past, again, we're going to make this series a lot longer than we need to. Now here, I'm going to try and run past this guy. But honestly, we'll be lucky if we get away with it. All right, never mind. As I, as I said a minute ago, the, our collision with our black Agamon there could have actually pushed Gobamon into us. It's actually looking like it might. Can you just... Yeah, thanks. So, <laughs> we, we dodge it there, but that is a thing that you have to be careful for. And, you know, if we bang into these guys by accident, it's not the end of the world because they're pretty easy to, to deal with. But it can be problematic later on. Now, I'm going to run past these guys and we're going to take a quick peek into this area over here. I haven't... I haven't oh, are we going to end up in a double battle here? No. <laughs> Holy shit. These guys are thirsty. Would you fuck off? All right. So this little area here is the server desert. Um, and we're not going to be in here for very long because, again, the Digimon in here are above our pay grade at the moment. Uh, we're going to scold here because I don't want our Digimon to be telling us what to do because that's not how uh, how this ship's going to fly or sail or whatever you like. We're going to tell Finn to behave himself. Uh See, that, that's kind of interesting there because I tried to feed Finn a meat, right? This is just typical fucking Digimon, right? I tried to feed him a bit of meat and he was like, I don't like that. And then when we actually fed it to him, he was like, dude, that's my favourite. You can't fucking win, guys. Anyways, as I said, we're, we came into the server desert. As you can see, this Gotsumon here, that level 4 Gotsumon is outlined in red, which means that Normally, you don't really want to fuck with that guy unless you're a little bit stronger or you have a, a bunch more items to help you sustain. Now, I do want to quickly talk to Vimon real quick here because Vimon is an absolute baller Digimon and uh, yeah, we'll see what he's got to say. So, that blockhead Togemon, even though my special move is so cool and so strong, I'll never go back there. Hmph. What is it? Are you, are you human? What are you doing in a place like this? Is it your first time here? I mean, not really, but for the time being, I guess we'll say yes, because for some of you guys, this actually might be your first time in the in the server desert, but we get this really awful uh, overview of the desert, which shows us nothing but sand dunes. Anyways, we're, uh, we're going to see that there is actually exits from the server desert, and you can actually go into other parts of the game from here. If we were to wander through the server desert right now, it would be kind of suicide, because as you can see in the minimap up the top right, there are a fuck ton of... I've got some on in here and I don't want to fight a bunch of them over and over because ultimately they will kick our ass and destroy us. But I'm just showing you guys that the... Oh my god, hello. I'm just showing you guys that the server desert is there and also we're going to use this loading screen to uh, refresh this area and hopefully find the item that we need for Palmon and uh, and see if it's up here. Now it's unlikely but you never know. Oh my goodness, are we... No, I don't think that's what we need, is it? Is this what we need? I don't think so. We need a salty fruit. Apparently we got a juicy fruit. So all these items that we are picking up right now, we can actually feed to our Digimon if we want to. Um, we're not always going to want to feed them all these random things, but each item that we pick up normally has its own kind of individual niche thing that we can do. I think, I, I don't know off the top of my head what each of these do, but I mean, I'm pretty sure if we went over them in our inventory, it would actually give us a heads up. And we've just changed to evening time. Because it's went past 4pm, the, the Digimon... Well, they're still the same just now, but if we were to reset this area, the Digimon are going to reset. So I think rather than tangle with four Goblimon at once, we're just going to run this way and see if we can pick up any more items or things like that. I'm still keeping an eye out for our thing for uh, Palmon. It would be far too easy if we picked it up right now. What I might actually have to do is a time skip in order to get it. But there is also something else that I want to do, and that is to head into the area over to our right. Now, I'm kind of scared now because... 
what happens is when you go into the evening time, as I said a minute ago or a second ago, we've went past 4 p.m. Okay, and so it's changed from uh, daylight to this kind of dusk kind of uh, climate change, I guess. I don't know weather condition, and that means that when you like when we refresh this area and come back in here, all these Digimon are going to be different. Okay, they're they're not going to be Goblimon anymore, and they're, with that change, they're also going to be a bit more difficult. Now I'm not sure. Yeah, what level are you? I'm just curious. You're level four. And we also need the bathroom anyway. So I wanted to come in this area, guys, because there is a lot of food spawns and there was a strong chance that we would get our Palmon plant here. But uh, I'm not going to do it during the night time or the evening because it's just asking for a butt whipping. And I don't want to burn more resources than we have to. It just doesn't make sense at this point. So I think what I will do is rather than wander around here and get our butts kicked, I think what we'll, uh, we'll maybe fight one of these Numamon here. If that, is it Numamon that I'm... Is that correct? Yeah, we've got Numamon. We'll see how strong this guy is. If he's going to be outlined in red, we probably don't want to fight with him. I don't really know. Let's see. He is, and he's level two. So the thing is, if we if we fought this guy, we could probably beat him, but we would probably use all of our small recoveries. And I don't know how much how good our stat gains would be. We would probably have to get a limit break in order to make the fight work. And there is a strong possibility that he just shits on us uh, before that happens. So rather than fuck that up, I'm probably just going to head back to the city. And we will be able to find out what some of our new city residents are doing. Now we are actually into evening time. It's past 6pm. And the Digimon will not change again. But you lose this kind of... Uh, you lose the very happy melody or me melodic music, I guess. For want of a better set of words. You lose the kind of cheery music. And you get this kind of nice, quiet, um, eerie music. And I can't, I, I think it's kind of the, the way of the... The way that the game tells you that, you know, be careful when you're outside because the Digimon will be slightly more difficult and, and shit like that. But anyways, speaking of music changes, we're now back with Digimon in his hut of love. Not always the place that you want to be, but in this instance, it's it's only good news that awaits us. Digimon, you're back, Wolfie. Patmon has come back to Felicia and he's opened a warehouse. Tentamon has come back to Felicia and he has opened up an item shop. So we have two new buildings, one of which is useful and the other is going to be useful later on. In fact, it's going to be quite useful, but... The shop is our, our uh, the best thing just now. And we also get an opportunity to talk about the Tamer skills and the Tamer tree because as well as your Digimon having stats and abilities and gaining new powers as they get stronger, you yourself as the main character actually do exactly the same. So we're going to look at that very briefly. But before we do that, let us... Uh, okay, so the game's just going to force us in here. So I guess this is a fine opportunity. I mean, you don't own, you don't own this game. We do whatever we want. But uh, yeah, it looks like we're going to have to look at this shit while we're here because we mean as well. So this is the Tamer Tree. There is a million different things that you can put points in. And every person who plays this game is probably going to do something different. They're going to have their own opinions on what is the best set of things. In fact, let me just straight up turn my webcam off here with all the different buttons. Let you guys see the full picture here. So you can boost a bunch of shit with your Tamer points. On, over in the on the right hand side there, it tells us that we have three Tamer points so far. And so we could potentially pick one of these starting things for me personally i have an idea of what i want to do but it is this one along here and we don't have enough points for it just yet so if i click on this and go down to here learn from experience we need five trainer points and it will boost the uh, i think that's meant to be efficiency i don't know what efficiency i don't i don't know i think that's a, a, a typo there i'm not entirely sure but boosts um the efficiency of our post battle parameters um and the increase so when we win a battle, we will get more points, blah, 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 okay? So we we want to take this, but we can't get it until we hit Tamer level 2. So for the time being, we're going to probably chill. Other things that you could take instead of that, though, um, I mean, there's a ton of stuff here. You can pick, you can pick things that help you uh, use your items a bit better. You can throw items further, get items back, blah, blah, blah. Um, you can also increase the drop rate of items after battles, which could be important, how much money you get after battles. Up here we have, I mean, there, there's a ton of shit you can do here, guys. And honestly, what happens is when we play through this game, we're going to naturally gather tamer points on, like, very, like, frequently. Okay, so I got asked before in the past when I was making my next order guides, could you do one on tamer skills? And, you know, I thought about it, but at the same time, it really, it doesn't matter too much. You know, people will probably say, like, oh, you're picking the wrong tamer skills, you should always go for these one first, blah, blah, blah. And... You know, there might be more efficient ways to put your... You know, there might be an efficient order to put your tamer skills into 
when you play this game, but ultimately it doesn't really fucking matter, if I'm being honest, okay? You can do things a bit faster if you do certain paths, but honestly, it's an RPG into each his own, you know? I wouldn't recommend that you go ahead and stick, you know, your first couple points into mining, because that's not a good idea. You don't really need the resources right now. But, um, you know, you can do whatever you want. And for me, I'm going to put my points into the uh, into this one down here, as I mentioned. But other things that you could do is probably your digivolution uh, digi parameters and all that shit. You could put points in there so that when you evolve, you, uh, you get more points and stats. That's quite important. Um, sorry, this one over here, Power Trainer blah 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 so there's a bunch of stuff you could do it's up to you guys increased life uh, at rebirth and digivolution is also quite important but anyways as i said as we play through this game we are going to naturally amass tamer points and, and get all that shit as we go so we don't have to spend too much time worrying about it i probably spent longer than i needed to there but anyways well, let's go across and speak to a uh, patamon here and we can inspect his warehouse very very quickly that sounded extremely rude and i didn't mean to say things like that but anyways here we are we'll embrace it Cheerful apple, quick fruit, baby strawberry. There's a ton of stuff that we have. We have 16 out of 20 bag space right now. So I guess we could probably dump some of this shit in here. But I think a better thing to do would be to actually just talk to Tentamon. Wherever Tentamon is. Where is Tentamon? Is he over here? I'm kind of confused right now. Where is Tentamon and why is he not here? Um, does he only come out? I don't know what's going on. Why am I, why am I confused right now? Where is Tentamon? Why is he not outside? Did we recruit Tentamon? We did, didn't we? I, I I don't even know. But anyways, I'm having a brain fart moment. I think he maybe we have to wait until the day for Tentamon to come out or some shit. I, I don't really know what's going on. But uh, anyways, let us go into our training hall and train for the rest of the day. And hopefully all will be revealed later on. I don't know if I'm just being a dumbass or whatever. But uh, didn't Jigimon tell us that uh, Tentamon came back to the city? I think he did. Anyways... Let's put Palmon on the HP training and we'll put Agamon on the speed training because as we talked about before, the sooner that you can get your Digimon um, attacking in battle, the more abilities you're going to get off and the less damage you're going to take and stuff. So as we scale later on, our HP, like our, our speed wants to be scaled alongside our strength because, do you know, if you're attacking a bunch, like lots of lots of times, but your attacks aren't doing any damage, then, you know, that's a bit of a, a fail. And then uh, along the same vein, if your HP is massive but your defense is really low, it, it doesn't really matter. So we want to kind of scale those two together, or those four and twos, I guess. But for now, we're just going to keep putting points into HP and speed because it's going to let us do, uh, it's going to let us sur survive a little bit more. We will do a double. Oh, there we go. Our first, our first training fail right between the lines there. <laughs> All right. I mean, it had to happen at some point, but you know, it's not, it's not too bad. We'll feed our guys. Train them a couple more times, maybe rest them a little bit, and then eventually put them to bed. I'm going to hang on to some meat here and feed these guys digi stocks, which you've got to kind of be careful of in this game because uh, digi mushrooms actually put down your weight, so that's uh, something to consider. And then I think with here we could probably put these guys on uh, some other stuff. Wisdom isn't a stat I normally go for because all wisdom does is reduce the costs of your moves in battle, so it kind of it ties into your MP. I think actually, I've read online that actually boosts your chance to hit criticals as well, which makes a bit of sense. So that might be a thing as well. But for the most part right now, we're just going to focus on our other things. Let's do stamina and strength and kind of tie these together. And then after this, we should also maybe consider putting up our MP a little bit better as well so that we have enough energy to fight. So once I rest these guys and they wake up from this, they're going to go to sleep and that will kind of take us to the end of the, uh, the episode, I guess take these dudes to the bathroom as well and I'm kind of raring for these guys to go to bed so that I can wake them up and actually go outside because I'm super confused as to what's going on that that tentamon disappearance has really thrown me and it's probably a really simple explanation but I don't know what that is yet so here you'll notice that when you go to sleep you get a uh, 50 percent of your hp back all of your mp back and your tiredness goes down as well now if you actually sleep outside if you don't sleep in the training hall which was another reason we came back to the town you will actually get a reduced amount of recovery here. So keep that in mind because that's something I didn't notice uh, for quite a while. Alex apparently pooped in their sleep, which uh, I would kind of prefer if he never told me. We are going to scold them because if we praise them for doing that, we'd end up with shit all over the walls, which is not something I want in my life. So, uh, yep, yeah, with that in mind, let's feed these dudes. And we'll give them meat to start off with because they both really like that. Finn's still hungry, so we will feed him a digi stock. And let's wander outside. 
because I want to speak to Tanamon, I want to speak to Koromon, and for the love of God, I hope Tentamon's here. So we get some meat from our friend, and Tentamon is here. Was he? <laughs> he wasn't there when I was outside, right? Because I'm starting to panic that I'm going senile here. If I ran past him and, and spat the dummy earlier, I, I don't know what to say. Anyways, medicine, recovery, MP discs, blah, blah, blah. There is a couple of things that we can actually sell to Tentamon here, and that will help us wrap up our episode just nicely. I think rather than me running about panting like a dog trying to like do everything at once in the first couple of episodes, we're just going to take it chill. I do want to have like targets when I play this game. I don't want to just wander about and waste everybody's time because ultimately it wouldn't be interesting for me to watch someone else doing that. So when I play through this game, we will try and have targets for what we're going to be doing each episode. We won't just be mindlessly wandering around. But at the same time, uh, I also want to just enjoy the game as well because if I try too hard, I'm going to end up sweating. You guys are going to get exhausted listening to me if you haven't already, and uh, yeah, we don't really want that, so I think what we will do is try and collect Palmon stuff in the next episode, and maybe also fight some uh, harder battles and stuff like that as well, so anyways, here's Tentamon, we speak to him for the first time, so he has some extra dialogue lines, we are going to sell to this guy before we do anything, because there's a couple of things we can sell to try and generate our money, we haven't done any battles, so our bits down in the bottom right really suck right now, but uh, it's not a big deal. So bandages we're going to need. Our autopilot we probably will keep because we only have one of. Uh, autopilot will let us port directly back to town if you guys didn't know that. Very important item and it's absolutely one of my favourites. We need the cheerful apple for giving to uh, Palmon. So we're not going to sell that. And some of these things. So later on a baby strawberry qu could be quite useful. For, but for now it's too, uh, it's too expensive for us not to sell. It's just a good thing to get rid of. Uh, Asna, we're going to get rid of you as well. Again, you could be storing these things, guys, because later on they might be important. Uh, do I want to need... Mm, yeah, fuck it, let's get rid of these. We can pick up these as we go later on. Scratchy grass, we definitely don't need. Uh, duty fruit, 150, yeah. Cob fruit. See, the value of the items kind of indicates its rarity, so some of these are probably going to be important later on, but for the most part, we're just going to sell them just now. We have one medicine, and although it's worth a massive 1,250, we're not going to sell it just yet because we might actually need that if we get super fucked up in a battle. So, with all that being in mind, we can now use our funds to actually buy from Tentamon. If you guys don't do this when you play through next order, like sell all the shit that you don't need and uh, try and buy back recoveries, then I would recommend because it's going to make your life a lot easier. This is something I did when we were playing through Digimon World 1 as well, and it's, uh, it's massive, so... I would again recommend let's actually buy a couple more of these just so that we have enough items to go out and actually train properly now so now when we go into battles we don't have to be as scared because we have these extra items that will catch us if we fall now if you die in a battle in this game it's not the end of the world but it can have a lot of negative consequences that obviously we want to avoid if we can so again i i feel like i treat losses and, and deaths in battle a lot more dramatically than most players probably do but at the same time I want to try and avoid it at all costs and and yeah that's pretty much it we're coming up for the end of this episode guys as I said in the last episode my my length the length of each episode will get to around 40 minutes but for the first couple I want to keep them short because that will allow you guys to kind of you know see what's going on in the let's play see if you want to stick around and watch it for a bit longer and, uh, and it will give you guys a bit of a feel for how we do things around here and how things generally operate, okay? So, we'll try and keep these first couple of episodes short. And, yeah, I think it will just be better for everyone. So, one thing I will mention, in fact, I'll talk about it at the start of the next episode. I'm going to talk about, like, the sound quality and the the game quality, the webcam and all that stuff again. <laughs> not Maybe not the webcam, you guys are a bit exhausted with that, but we'll hit triangle here. In the, in the start of the next episode, I will talk about quality and stuff again because there might be people who have tuned out at this point and I want to talk to everyone about that. So, basically, uh, to kind of wrap up quickly, I, I will um, be spending the, the next couple of episodes looking back on the feedback of episodes 1 to 3 and basically finding out what you guys think if you want the game audio turned up, if you want the music volume turned down, blah, blah, blah. It's hard for me to gauge right now when I'm playing because when I edit it, the sound levels will change and stuff. So... It's just general starting, getting our feet off the ground kind of remarks and things. And uh, I, ultimately, I want to make this playthrough as, uh, as enjoyable for you guys as possible. So if that means tweaking some of our levels and our graphics and all that shit, then that's definitely something I'm going to be paying attention to. But with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed episode two. It, uh, it was kind of a bit more eventful than episode one, but still, I think we could be finding battles are, that are a lot more difficult for us, a lot more challenging, and that will ultimately make our guys a lot more stronger. So... 
With all that being said, let me know your thoughts. Leave me a rating if you enjoyed the episode. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys in the next part. So I hope to see you there. Stick around and uh, yeah, we can recruit some more Digimon. See you guys soon. Bye bye.